Hey friends, it's Alex from Vulture Culture and welcome to Fundamentals of EQ. Today we're going to be looking at high pass and low pass filters. Before we get started, please like this video if you find it helpful and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all of the tutorials. And I'm going to be using ReEQ, which is Reaper's stock EQ plugin, but you could use whatever your DAW's host EQ plugin is for these videos. So let's get started. So instead of using shelf filters, today we're going to be using high pass and low pass filters. Here's the drum loop without any processing. Now, as I bring a high pass filter up, you can hear that it's cutting out all the frequencies below a certain note, which is called the cutoff on a, on a filter like this. So right now, dramatically, everything below 100 hertz or so is getting filtered completely out of the sound. And a uh, low pass filter does the opposite. It cuts high frequencies until we have almost nothing. Confusingly, uh, these filters are most often called high pass and low pass filters. And what it means by low pass is it's passing low frequencies through. And a high pass filter is doing the opposite. It's passing high frequencies through, but not low frequencies. It's a little unintuitive. The, the more intuitive way to refer to these uh, filters is high cut and low cut filters. So instead of saying high pass, really it's cutting the low frequencies out. And instead of saying low pass, this is a high cut filter. It makes a lot more sense. Unfortunately, it's pretty common parlance that people call them high pass and low pass filters. I know I do. I know pretty much everyone does. So you just have to remember that it's passing the lower high frequencies, not cutting them. Now, why would we even use something like this? And the reason is, for certain sounds, you might not want the full audio spectrum range of frequencies in a sound. So let's go look at uh, the snare, for example. Let's pull this up and let's uh, stretch this out. New in this update of Reaper, you can now resize re to any size. So if we uh, just listen to the snare, we can see that there's some really low frequencies, but most of it is hanging around this 150, 170 mark. And there's a lot of frequency stuff all the way up there. Now, if we wanted to, one of the nice little features in uh, Reaper is that you can, uh, once you've drug a low shelf far enough, it just becomes a high pass filter, which is cool. Or vice versa, a high shelf can become a low pass filter. Now, if I was to bring this up to 200, it's dramatically going to thin out that sound because now this frequency information is not as powerful. If I bring it up to 300, it's really going to kill all of the thump of the snare. And this snare has already been pretty well processed, so it sounds fine. But if you were to uh, maybe want to get it just to be have a little less sizzle on top, for instance, this might not be terrible. So what I'm going to do is unmute this. So you can hear, if we didn't want it to have too much sizzle, maybe filtering some of that out would be good. I'll disable this for now. And if we want to take some of the thump out, we could also filter that out. Now the snare is really just this bright, snappy thing, but it doesn't have a lot of impact to it. So one of the reasons you might want to use a high pass filter is to clean up some frequencies that are clashing between two instruments that have similar frequency content. The most common would be uh, kick and bass line. So this is the kick and the bass line together. Now you can see this has a lot of very low content in it. And they're, they're definitely competing for that sub bass frequency. Now if I high pass some of this out 
Now the kick really has that whole domain to itself and it's gonna hit a little bit harder. And uh, there's always a fine line when you're doing this. You don't want to uh, castrate the bass line too much and get it sounding so thin that it's not contributing a whole lot. But sometimes it can be better than having it be full spectrum because right now there's a lot of low end content and probably in the uh, whole mix we probably just don't need that. You don't want to have too much down there so sometimes it can be useful to filter out some, some of the low end from the bass line so that the kick really comes through. So let's talk about some of the other functions. So right now I have a high pass on the drums. Now uh, in Reaper, there actually isn't a gain function on uh, filters. I'm not sure why that is exactly, um, but you'll see a lot of times different uh, slopes to filters. So this right now is a six decibel and octave slope, which means that every octave, which is between these two lines here, the filter drops by six decibels uh, progressively. One of the ways, this is a little hack, if you need a, a steeper slope, you can just turn a second one on and bring it to the same frequency. So you can see that the, the cutoff now cuts off more dramatically than if I did a regular, if there's two on the same frequency. Uh, one of the other things that we can do is uh, add resonance by modifying the bandwidth. So if I actually move this into a small amount, you can see that the filter actually has a kind of a bump around the cutoff frequency. And you can hear that those frequencies are starting to ring around that cutoff point. And the reason that that's uh, useful, it's, it's probably one of the most common things in synthesis is to, to use that. Um, but it's also great just for doing anything that, that you want to have like a, a really, uh, you want to emphasize that cutoff frequency. And that's it. Please like this video if you found it helpful and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all the tutorials. And I'll see you in the next video.